Hello viewers, we have a brand new circuit added to Gran Turismo 7. Road Atlanta has now been added. Really good to see a brand new track added into the game after Watkins Glen was added three or four months ago now. Let's take a look at the circuit. You may well have already played it because it's Daily Race C this week in the Mazda Roadster Touring Car. Let's just take a quick look at it in circuit experience in the Group 3 Beetle. It's a very fast and flowing circuit, especially this section of the track here. Through the S's down the hill, then back up the other side. And then you've got this fast, tricky left at the end of the first sector. Before you then head into two 90 degree right handers, which then leads on to the back straight, which is inevitably always going to be the best overtaking place on the lap. A little bit wide there into this turn. So now we're onto the back straight long straight longest straight on the track which then results in the biggest braking zone on the circuit down at the bottom of the hill at the chicane so as you can see yeah full throttle for quite a while here as you gain um, further momentum down this hill breaking at the bottom of it into the chicane no doubt there's going to be overtakes here when this features in online races as it has done in daily race c this week dropping down the hill in towards the final corner flat out fearsome corner this one and uh, there we go, completing Zerg experience with a mid-17, not too bad. But I wanted to see how this track performs in a race. So I set, it, uh, I set up a lobby and quite a few of you guys joined in, which is really good to see. Uh, let's see how this uh, track performs in a Group 3 race. Starting from pole, I've gone for the Corvette, deciding to choose an American car here on an American circuit, of course. Heading towards turn one, going defensive, perhaps too narrow of a line here because the car on the outside, the Mercedes there, managed to sweep right around the outside and I'm immediately down into second. Let's see how easy it is to follow through this section, which traditionally really is going to be a single file kind of section of the track. Not ideal really, to kind of go side by side through here. Widening the kerb on the right and the left, maximising the track width on the exit as well as we then head into the two right handers I, I decided to set uh, this race to a seven lapper which I felt like uh, was a decent length of race as uh, Road Atlanta is not too long of a circuit uh, quite a quite a short lap I'd say just over a minute in a group three car firmly in the slipstream here of the Brazilian and you can see the, be uh, the benefit of that he's going to defend to the right hand side this will give us the inside for the chicane at the bottom of the hill when we eventually get there. Don't now break ourselves, we've got the inside a little bit deep to be honest, but managed to park it on the apex of the second part of the corner and we regain the lead of the race. Dropping down the hill through the final turn over the line to begin lap two and the Mercedes is very close there so I decide okay I'm going to go to the inside, cover him off and force him the long way around and you know, it's going to be a very difficult overtake through turn one. Turn one here at Road Atlanta, very fast corner. You're not really going to be breaking too much for that kind of turn. Therefore, it's not always going to be the best place to go for a move unless you've got really good momentum out of the final turn and have already got up the inside before you get there. A nice little run there on the exit. That would probably be a penalty. Is it going to be a penalty? Not quite. You do get penalties for running wide on the exit of that turn, but you have to be quite careful with exactly where you place your car. As I uh, go a little bit of understeer into that turn, I need to readjust my my timing into it and therefore out of it. And now we can see the opposite of lap one, whereby I'm going to be slipstreamed on the back straight here. So the Mercedes looking ominous in the rear view mirror. As we head to the right, I'm going to go to the left hand side, cover off the inside once more force a Brazilian to the outside and there's not much they can do about that as uh, we've successfully defended the position although he's really not giving this one up so it's not going to be an easy run as we head towards turn one once again on the beginning of lap three here as um, we take a look behind once again and I, def I, descend, uh, I, I decide not to defend if I can get those words out and I think it turned out to be the right decision didn't go for the move it would have been quite a risky one as he may well not have got fully alongside before the turn. So still holding the lead, albeit quite close. It's a very good race so far. And uh, the Brazilian there and the Mercedes able to, 
to run quite close and uh, give me a good battle here. Uh, we still have third place in close contention as well. Uh, so down at the chicane, end of lap number three. The dynamic of this race is playing out quite nicely and I think Road Atlanta, is, as the Brazilian gets very close on the exit, the dynamic of this track does lend itself to quite good racing, I, I feel. As um, We're going to fast forward it here to lap number four. Uh, it's really become a two-horse race now between myself and the Brazilian driver. And he's got a really good uh, run on me here. And I'm not going to defend it and it actually turns out to be the correct decision. It doesn't go for the move. And we can take the normal racing line as we head over the crest back down the other side. For the fourth time, three more laps left to go. Crossing the line, beginning of lap five. A new fastest lap of the race. Though the guy in third is actually quicker. And I forget to defend. I, I wasn't really sure if he was going to go for the move, but he quite easily managed to do it. So, obviously the wrong decision. So back down into second. It's a really good race so far. But can we wrestle back the lead of the race, heading down the S's? It's quite hard when you're following a car quite closely to spot all of your sight lines, your braking reference markers and such like. But um, as you can see, the uh, Brazilian just managed to edge out a couple of tenths. We do have... As I, as actually, we get a penalty there for the first time in the race, which is quite frustrating. As I've been kind of driving wide on that uh, exit of that corner. But that one a little bit too wide. As uh, now we have the Jaguar in third place for company. We're going to have to serve the penalty here on this back straight section. I'm not sure which side this guy's going. As uh, we lose crucial momentum, we're going to drop down to the third. So, barely a lap ago I was in the lead. Now down to third. It's going to be quite hard to wrestle back the lead in this race. But let's see what we can do. Up against the Jaguar and the Mercedes now in the Chevrolet. The Chevrolet actually performing pretty well. There's a little bit of lag on the screen. You might notice the car's sort of darting about in a weird fashion. But that is just the lag. And that is quite normal, I think, in the lo in the lobby mode where you've got a global uh, global reach. So racing against everyone from around the world. I don't know, the connection just never seems to be as good. I don't know, whatever the reason is, that is, um, yeah, the, the, the lobbies never seem to give as good quality. Tried it around the outside there of Mike there, but didn't really, didn't quite work out. Uh, Going to try to really get this position back as soon as I, pa as soon as I possibly can because... The leader is getting away. Mistake from Mike, he doesn't cover the inside, so I think this is going to be quite an easy overtake. Heading up the inside on the brakes, don't overshoot the corner. And it's job done. Back into second. And thankfully, just about close enough to be in the slipstream. Just over half a second behind. That's actually Mike gets a penalty now, so he's going to drop off here by a second or so. And... We're going to gain a comfortable two tenths against the leader here, so we still have a chance of actually winning this race, which is pretty cool, given that we, it looked like we almost pretty much threw it away about a lap ago with that penalty. Heading down the hill for the penultimate time. Can we get this race win at uh, Road Atlanta? It's proven to be a really good race so far. Looking up the inside, just trying to push him a little bit narrow to maybe force him off his line and make him get a poor exit. It's not quite working so far. Looks like we're going to have to follow through this section and then just be as close as we possibly can to put the, to put the pressure on in the second half of the lap. A bit wide there. Dropping down, back up the other side. Late on the brakes, carry the speed through. Don't get the penalty there. Still in the slipstream, he's actually had quite a good sector actually. Heading down towards turn number I don't know. I'm going to make it up a corner. I'm going to say number six then into seven could be completely wrong and then onto the back straight here we go then this is the moment let's see if we can pull off a move in the slipstream three tenths behind at the beginning of the straight under the motul banner we go heading towards the braking zone he's gone fully to the left he knows he wants to defend this one and i'm approaching slowly he's still covering the inside fair enough i'm gonna to go to the outside on the brakes we go covering him off and somehow <laughs> managed to go flying around the outside there's contact on the exit though and boom i'm in the shadow realm almost meeting barry r the road atlanta barry r and an unfortunate end of the race really as there was a tiny bit of contact on the on the curb car spun round, and there we go finishing in third place but to be honest um i think it was just it was just a minor coming together 
as uh, the guy said here, sorry. And, you know, it was just one of those moments where you're on the curb, the car's losing control, and then there's a bit of contact, and then you go around. But no love lost. It's all good. In fact, that's not the right phrase, is it? Um, it's all good in the end. I wanted to try a race from the back, and this race start was absolutely ridiculous. We're starting 13th with eight laps. This one, uh, I pretty much decided to do a reverse grid race. So let's see how this one goes. So 14th here, right, as we as we head towards turn one. Now, this is going to be a ridiculous lap one. As uh, through turn one, you see um, there's a Need for Speed M3 GTR BMW just randomly in there. Loads of cars spinning off, crashing on the left, uh, facing the wrong way. And before you know it, I'm already in fifth place. So nine positions gained in about 20 seconds. Heading up towards the end of the first sector, more cars off. Australian there going through the gravel and uh, meeting the Atlanta Barrier. And I'm in P4, heading down in towards six and seven uh, uh, as a guess of the corner numbers. And some, oh my goodness, is that the Kiwi driver, New Zealand driver? Uh, he's off into Barry R. Barry being very popular on this first lap of this race and already found, finding ourselves in third, which is honestly just quite ridiculous. And that's really just a result of keep it clean and just avoid the trouble. Don't really, I, I wasn't really forcing anything. Didn't really try to overtake anyone as, as you know, as such. It's more a case of take advantage of everyone else's misery. Heading down towards the final corner, up behind the mad Titan 333. Can we get past him? See if we can do anything here. Into this first corner, definitely nowhere near enough, close enough to get uh, a position here. Looking up the inside, but that gap was always going to close. Well, we forced him off his line here. We could perhaps get the old switcheroo, and it's a job well done. The uh, my first ever old switcheroo on Road Atlanta in Gran Turismo 7. It's such a proud moment. And honestly, I just really want to thank the guys back at the factory for this incredible package that they've uh, delivered here in this Porsche 911, uh, which is super capable of uh, the old switcheroo, which we all know and love. Anyway, on to the back straight, end of lap two. We've got the Aussie driver out in the lead. And we're going to try and catch up the best we can. It's in the Nissan GTR, which is good in a straight line, actually. But um, one, one thing I'm expecting, which is just a classic relationship between, I suppose, those in Australia and those in Europe, where I am, is just a lag fest. And as you can see, his car is dotting about all over the place, darting about in a very strange fashion. So it's going to be... In fact, that is quite a good defensive mechanism. Um, you're using some sort of, I don't know, I mean, it's just hard to really process the car in front when they're moving about like that. So it's actually quite a good um, tactical defense, you could say. Uh, you know, do you remember back in the day when people were using lag switches against their opponents? I don't know if people still do that, maybe they do. I'm not accusing this guy of doing that, but it's just the nature of often racing against people on the other side of the planet. Although it is quite cool when you think about it that we can actually race in some manner against people thousands of miles away. It's not such a, it's not such a bad thing, is it? But um, it could be better with uh, this weird sorcery at hand here. As um, at the end of lap three, trying to get this pass done, but kind of struggling because I can't really get close enough to this guy to really get the move done. This and GTI is quite a good car for this track. It's quite a good car overall, I would say, the Group 3 uh, Nissan GTR. Uh, so it's kind of a weird couple of laps here following this guy as he's darting about left and right, up, down, you name it. And um, you see here, getting very close, trying to work something, and it's not particularly easy. And if anything, the guy in third, uh, the Brazilian driver who we had a really good battle with in the first race, just beginning to reel me in so I kind of need to get a move on here before ideally he gets to me I need to try and overtake this guy before I get overtaken that would be the ideal strategy here so yeah my, my plan really is to win rather than finish second or third um, quite a good strategy if, you, if I'm being honest but 
might not work. We'll see if we can actually pull it off as uh, we've actually just got ourselves a penalty. And uh, this is not an ideal moment. Now, this is really weird right here because um, we're both heading up towards the penalty line. And I must have had a slight extra speed here because I managed to kind of gain time. Even though we served the same amount of time, I managed to get alongside him. The Brazilian goes through and just says, thanks very much, guys. I'll, t I'll take both of your positions. Thank you very much. And now it's once more a two-horse race between myself and the Brazilian, the, uh, the Australian there has been quickly dispatched, although in a weird manner, but it doesn't matter to me. I've, um, I've gone from second to second, which is just incredible. Let's see what we can do now though, up against our familiar foe here in the Mercedes. Can we get on my feet line? Not really. Through here, it's, it's almost impossible to overtake. We just kind of have to sit behind and wait for this section to be over. As we then head through the left, up the hill, try not to get the penalty and he covers the inside here covers the right hand side there's not much I can do other than try it around the outside is it quite going to work gives me space to be fair and then through here it's going to be another move completed around the outside I've turned into Eminem all of a sudden and done it done him twice two around the outside moves and now he's going to try it on the right hand side against me can he get one back on me down into the chicane in fact he's got a really good run here the Mercedes power showing its hand I've got the inside line and managed to regain the position quite safely as uh, we round out lap number five of eight and I must say Road Atlanta I've really enjoyed this track I will jump onto Daily Race C and try to make a video on that in the Mazda Roaster touring car and um it's really good to see another circuit being added Road Atlanta isn't one that I expected to see I was kind of thinking that they wouldn't really add too many American circuits, but there's lots of American circuits I would like to see. And uh, Watkins Glen and Road Atlanta were definitely two tracks that I, I wanted to see in Gran Turismo. So it's really good to see them added. And obviously I'd love to know your thoughts on, on this track and maybe tracks that they should bring out in the future. I, I think it'd be great for them to bring out some classic circuits from the older games. Um, but as far as real circuits go, Road Atlanta is right up there for me. And if these two races are anything to go by, it's, it's going to be really fun racing on this circuit. Ultimately, come through to win that race. It was a really fun lap one. And to be honest, it was kind of one on lap one because I gained so many positions straight away. But uh, yeah, that's the end of this one. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.